This should be the last part in the MVVM Jetpack Impose course for beginners if everything goes the way that I want and I don't have to make any updates. I'm sure, you know, Jetpack Impose is gonna be updated in the future very quickly. So I'm probably gonna to have to sort of make update videos as I go, which this is a good time to remind you. That's why I always recommend watching this course on my website because that way I'll switch out the videos if I need to update a particular video. That way, if you watch it in order on my website, you're guaranteed to get the most updated video. So in this video, we're just gonna clean things up a little bit. I wanna abstract out the progress bar, the snack bar, and just move all that stuff into our app theme because those are things that are gonna get used over and over again in every single fragment, every single view. So it just makes sense to move them to the app theme to reduce code duplication. So let's, uh, let's go into, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. We can go into recipe list fragment to start off. So let's look in here and just kind of think like, what are the things that we use in every single view? Well, the, uh, well, actually I should have gone into recipe list, sorry. Well, the, uh, the circular indeterminate progress bar and the default snack bar, those get used everywhere. No matter what, we're always gonna have those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut those out. Now go into my app theme. So going to theme, go into the theme.kt file, scroll down and we're gonna paste them inside of here. Now we're gonna need to make some changes, of course, there's some red here, but this is uh, hopefully gonna, you'll hopefully see that this, you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to move these things into our app theme because every single fragment is going to use this app theme. So first of all, inside the material theme, I wanna create a box and inside of this box, I'm gonna add a modifier, set the modifier equal to modifier. Whoops, that was the wrong modifier import. I wanna make sure to get the compose UI modifier modifier, do fill maximum size, and then do dot background. So let's move this to the next line, do dot background and do color equals if, uh, if not dark theme, then we want to use gray number one. Otherwise I wanted to use black. Cause remember the only, one of the only things you need to really remember about dark theme is that the background of everywhere should be like, like, like the darkest black possible. And then everything else that is sort of quote unquote raised above should be like a lighter kind of color of black. So making sure that the background is kind of the darkest black possible. So now grab the content, the circular indeterminate progress bar, the default snack bar, cut those and paste them inside of our box. Now replace this is displayed with a Boolean that we're gonna pass up here. So we need um, a you know a loading Boolean or a is show progress bar Boolean, something like that. I'm gonna call it display progress bar. So display, progress bar and of course this will be a boolean and then the second argument that we need here is the scaffold state because we do have the um the snack bar stuff in here so scaffold state and then just write a comma so now come down and let's do display progress bar as the value for that boolean we need to get a import here because we're using an experimental api so just grab that and everything should be pretty much good to go so now that we have this stuff in our app theme now we can go into recipe list fragment and scroll up and just fix any kind of errors that you see. So first of all, we need to move all of these mutable state values, cut those and put them above the app theme. And now inside of the app theme, uh, now we have a couple more arguments. So display progress bar, that's gonna equal loading. And then of course the scaffold state would equal that scaffold state. So now everything should be exactly the same as it was before, just that we have you know less, slightly less code inside of the composables inside the fragment. So now that we have this in the theme, we can also go into our other fragment, which is recipe fragment and do the same thing. So come up to the top and just do, you know, display progress bar, set that equal to loading, and we can do the scaffold state and set that equal to the scaffold state. Now, of course, since we've added those to the app theme, we also need to scroll down and just get rid of these down at the bottom here. We have that circular progress bar and we have that snack bar. So that should be it. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Let's run it and let's take a look. Everything should be exactly the same as it was before. Okay, there's the app launching. There's our nice shimmer animation. Everything looks good. Everything looks totally normal. Let's, you know, let's just do some stuff. Let's click around. Let's make sure everything's good. There's the progress bar. Remember if I click on milk, that should show the snack bar. Yes, it does. All right, now let's click on a recipe. We go to recipe fragments. The shimmer looks good. Everything looks good. Now let's try some rotations. Let's do a rotation, that looks fine. Let's press back. List position is maintained, everything looks good there. Now let's rotate back and see if that's good. Yes, it is. So everything looks like it is working as expected. So that is gonna be it for the course, hopefully anyway. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. And as another reminder, 
A better way to watch this is to go to my website, codingwithmitch.com. Just register an account. It's completely free. Go over to courses and click on the MVVM Jetpack Compose course right here. Here you can watch, you know, all the entire course. It's still got a to-do here because technically I'm still filming it. This is the last one, but this will be all updated. And you can choose, you know, whatever, whichever lecture it's broken down into parts. It also keeps track of your progress. So like if I press back here, it gives me like a, a little progress indicator showing how far I am through the course. And it keeps track of everything, you know, your place in each lecture, everything like that. It's just a better way to watch the course. And like I said, if any of these lectures get updated, like suppose something changed and I had to update one of these videos, then of course, clicking on the, you know, the lecture in the, on the course in my website is going to give you the correct one. Whereas on YouTube, it's, there could be multiple videos because I'm, I'm not going to take something down obviously. And you can't update videos on YouTube. So watching it on my website is definitely a superior way to watch this course. So hopefully you enjoyed the course. I know I really enjoyed making it. Jetpack Compose seems really awesome. I tried out Flutter for around a month and Flutter, the way that you build UIs is just like so much easier, so much better than native Android when it comes to UI building anyway. I definitely like Kotlin over Dart. I definitely prefer writing Kotlin code over Dart, but um, the UI building stuff just doesn't even compare. Compose is awesome, but it's still, Flutter UI building is still superior in my opinion. It's faster, the hot reload is awesome. Everything just seems to work better, but obviously because Flutter has been around for a lot longer than Compose has been around. So there's still, you know, kinks to work out. That's going to be it for the course. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed making it. Jetpack Compose seems really awesome. I think it is 100% the future of UI building for native Android. I almost have no doubt in my mind that that is definitely going to be the case. Working with XML is just much more tedious. There, there's too many dependencies that are don't well they don't like work together or this version doesn't work with that version it's just an inferior way in my opinion this declarative ui stuff is definitely the way to go so what's coming up next well we've now built out like kind of the introduction this jetpack goes jetpack compose introduction so now up next what we're going to do in the next course and this is going to be a paid course on my website i'm going to kind of take the, take this app to the next level we're going to introduce a database cache we're going to abstract out use cases and we're going to do some unit testing and specifically we're going to focus on testing the unit cases and we're also going to use data store so um keeping track of uh, some of the sort of preferences that the user chooses, like dark theme or light theme, tracking that in the data store. By the way, if you don't know what data store is, it's the newest version of sort of shared preferences out there. It's like a replacement of shared preferences. So basically just adding a bunch of new stuff, more practical stuff, more realistic stuff to the application. So as always, leave some engagement, leave a like. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in that next course because I know all of you are going to go watch it. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video is over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture. If you've ever been curious about that, we have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you want to just improve your skills. This is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard. Your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills you know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.